It's the go home show for WWE Night of Champions, but was it any good? Let's find out, shall we? Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the some more raw thoughts. Oh yes, it's the go home show for Night of Champions, which is this Sunday. So of course you're expecting it to be a good show. We want you to buy our show. This is why sort of show. Before we go on, three little points. First things first, thank you to everyone who watched my little drama vid the other day. I do, I, it's my most commented on vid for ages. Some weird people came out of the woodwork for that one. Peter fucking Gilmore, remember that idiot? Didn't rise, he was still on YouTube, believe it or not. That idiot comes along, sends me a fucking essay. Honest to God, an essay. About why should we, we should be friends and why we should respect each other. And it's like, no, Peter, you're a prick. You will always be a prick. You can tell me you've changed your ways as much as you want. When you stop telling me how many views you've had in the comments, which is something you still do, when you uh, when you stop responding to haters, yeah, then we'll talk. Until that day, go fuck yourself. Also got an essay from Sean that literally, I clicked on it, saw how long it was, and clicked delete. <laughs> it's like, I'm not interested in what you've got to say for yourself. Because you notice the thing is, is if you notice on the, on the vid, he's put loads of comments here, but none of them are actually relevant to what I've said. You know, he doesn't address the fact that he's got 13,000 subscribers, but less than 4,000 people watch his vids. I genuinely believe you. I genuinely believe this. Can't prove it. Can't prove it. I believe he's he buys subscribers. That's my genuine belief now. Now that I've thought about it, it's one of those, that is how it makes sense. You've got dead accounts subscribed to you, and they don't watch your vids. It's that simple. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you to everyone who watched that. I've got a question. I really, really need an answer to this one, guys. All right, you know me, I like getting comments at the best times, but I need you to comment. Just It's just one little word, right? Yes or no? Or, I mean, if you want to emphasize on it, you can. I need to know, do you watch my videos in HD? This video right now is in HD. If you look in the little cog there, it's in HD. The thing is, the difference between my vids in HD and the not being HD, like 480p or 360p or whatever it is, yeah, is that it has some black bars here. And that's really about it. And it's one of those things that what I want to know is if you if you're not watching in HD, the thing is re, the reason I'm asking this, and, and I know you're tuning in to watch me talk about Raw, and I'll try and be quick, yeah. But HD vids um with the, this is my mobile phone, yeah, and it, they were a gigabyte, and which means they take a couple of hours to upload. And it's like, if I don't record in HD, we can up drastically reduce the upload thing. But is there any difference in quality? Is what I want, you know, is, is, is it worth me doing them in HD? I mean, I don't think many people in the YWC record in HD. A lot of people use webcams or, you know, I've, I've basically, since I started doing vids in HD, I've prided myself on the fact that I do vids in HD. My vids are in HD, happy days. But I just wonder if it's worth it. Last thing before we get on to Raw, and I know that even less people are going to be interested in this one, but I've got a new mix out. I haven't done a drum, a drum bass mix for a while, so I've got a chilled. Trust me on this one, guys. This mix is one of the best mixes I've ever, ever done. 45 minutes of just beautiful music. Put it on as background. Trust me, if you're studying, if you're in your car, it's, it's just so nice to listen to. Trust me on that one. So, Raw, that's what we're here for, aren't we? I'm sorry, waffling on and on and on and on. Raw starts off in quite a surprising way, to be honest, as Edge's music hits. And you can probably imagine the pop is the biggest of the night by, by a mile. And yeah, massive roar ups out and Edge comes out. It's good to hear Edge's music again. It's even better to hear uh, Tony Schimmel doing his super song. It's brilliant. Um, yeah. It's happy to be home. Triple H wants them to have a reunion. It's not the reunion you'd expect, which is Edge and Christian. He, Triple H wants them to have a reunion with, with his uh, rated RKO. Teammate Randy Orton, happy days. He says he hasn't got a problem. With it. So he says, he says Orton's boring. He's like watching paint dry. Oh, hello. What happened then? One of my posters fell down. That's quite spooky, isn't it? Uh, especially the fact that I'd spent a couple of minutes before we started filming, uh, pointing it back up. Um, yeah, he says he's got no problem with Orton cashing in his money in the bank because he, he broke the blueprint for cashing in. He's just got a problem with him being Triple H's lucky. Edge decides Orton won't be a guest, so he's got a different guest, and the crowd starting chanting yes before he can even get a chance to introduce him. Of course, Daniel Bryan comes out. We get to see footage from last week of Big Show hitting the KO punch on Bryan. Bryan says Triple H said that if he doesn't go his title, he would get hurt, and yeah, he got hurt, but it doesn't matter, because when you, whatever you put in front of him, he will beat Randy Orton for the championship at Night of Championship. 
Night of Championships. Night of Champions. <laughs> Edge sees a lot of himself in Daniel Bryan. He used to wrestle in barns and used to wrestle in armories. And yeah, he loves, he clearly loves wrestling. Everybody, have you noticed they've started saying wrestling a lot recently? In the last year or so, wrestling has become a term they're allowed to say. And it seems to be more and more on WWE TV at the moment. Good, like that one. Don't like it when they're not allowed to refer to themselves as wrestlers. Because that's what they are. It's like Kentucky Fried Chicken. You can call it KFC as much as you want, yeah? But it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. You can say it's, we are WWE. We are WWE. That is us. You're still World Wrestling Entertainment. You can't take that second W out of your name, you know? And if it's actually, no, fuck it. You can. You can call yourself fucking Bob Jones Incorporated if you wanted to. But the fact is that what you're doing in the ring is still wrestling. Even though in the first hour of this show, there's nine minutes of wrestling. But, you know. What do you expect? Anyway, anyway. Oh, um, so, yeah, um, uh, Orton comes out. He disses Canada. He disses Edge's body. Edge retorts with a great line, which is, I may have problems with my spine, but at least I have one. That's nice. I like that. Uh, Triple H comes out, obviously, 12 minutes into this little video, for this little thingy, by the way. 12 minutes in. Edge is a WWE employee, so he can say what he likes. He says that Triple H says he's crap at... He says that Triple H is crap at spotting talent. He didn't see anything in special in, in Edge. Didn't see anything special in Jericho. Didn't see anything special in Cena. And now he doesn't see anything in Brian. And he can't see past his massive nose. No, oh, that's nice. Triple H plugs some TV show that Edge is in because it's good for business. I don't care. I and mean, that's why this. That's why Edge is here to plug something. I think it's called Haven. I think it is, which of course is a whole a chain of uh, holiday parks over here in England. Yeah, never mind. We won't be watching. And then says he was wrong about Jericho, wrong about Cena, and only time will tell about Brian. But he was definitely right about Edge. He says the race star superstar was a failure, and he never drew a dime. And I bet I, I watched this going and, and just smiled and just went. God, I bet the internet lost their shit over that one. Oh, God, yes. Doesn't, you know, it, it's one of those things. After last week, just with the Steph saying that she was 12 when Big Show came in, nothing that these guys say will surprise me in the, you know, in, for the rest of this storyline. Nothing. So you say that Edge didn't draw a dime? Fair enough, because you didn't draw fuck all for most of your career, Triple H. Let me tell you that much. Yes, you were a draw in 2000, but that's because Rock was a draw as well, and Rock needed an opponent. We could get with that that one, we could spin off into a whole other vid, wouldn't it? Was Edge a draw? I think he personally was, especially when he was on the, those years that he was on SmackDown. Was Triple H a draw? Well, a bit. Was he a draw in 2003, like I'm reviewing at the moment? Was he bollocks? You know, when you're watching Unforgiven 2003, which is my next video match 10 years ago series, and they look at the buy rate and just go, no one bought that one to see your ass. That's a fact. <laughs> anyway, like I say, that could be a whole other bit. What I think, like I say, the, I bet the internet just lost their shit when that comment went down. I bet it did. Tonight, Daniel Bryan gets a chance to prove himself. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Dean Ambrose. Uh, to counteract the members of the Shield, because he's a fair guy, he can have the big show in his corner. Happy days. Hunter says he's not a dictator, and life will be a lot easier if everyone just got along with him. Uh, the, chance, the fans chant ass a lot, because they're like that. And we're in Toronto, after all. And Edge comes back with, I didn't have to marry to get my success. I earned my Hall of Fame ring, and you're not a dictator, but you are a dick. And, of course, that is just taking it too far. You could have just left it there. And so Triple H, of course, is just like, right, I can't hurt you, but I can hurt people you love. So the Shield dragged Christian out. Fantastic. This one was 19 minutes long. It was 10 minutes too long. And you know, the worst part about it, right, two things. Worst part is this didn't achieve fuck all because it was just Brian Orton and Triple H talking again. Secondly, how many people tuned into this show to see Edge, right? Put him at the start of the second hour, for goodness sake. I bet there was so many people out there. I bet you you could have been one of them, right? Watching this one, to, really looking forward to seeing Edge and going, oh, man. I mean, I, I wasn't really that fussed about seeing Edge, so it was one of me sort of things. And then in the back, after the commercial break, Edge storms into Hunter's office, says he wishes the doctors would clear him so that he could fight him, and Hunter's just like, well, we can't, so me, whatever, and gets him escorted out of the building. Happy days. Our first match of the night 
is Kofi Kingston defeating Curtis Axel via disqualification. I love the way how they had Axel lose on SmackDown. That was really good, showing that he's vulnerable. Heyman, obviously, really scared about that. Heyman's reactions, of course, were brilliant. What I also love about Heyman is on this one is that he hasn't shaved for ages, and it's the little touches like that that he's really worried about. It, that not only I think are brilliant, but also made me really think that Punk's getting screwed over on Sunday. I can't see this being the end of the feud. I really, I just can't see it. Personally, I think that Axel will lose, and then when it's Heyman versus Punk when you get a new Paul Heyman guy something like that I just I just can't see this one being the end of it yet saying that I want Axel to defeat Punk clean but that's just me um yeah basically you've got um in the corner Axel unloading with knees to the back of Kofi Kingston referee counts up to five and when he gets to five doesn't break it so he just keeps doing it referee disqualifies him happy days and then of course Heyman realizes well if you do this on Sunday I've got to face Punk and of course, Axel's like, don't worry, no, you're not going to be, I'm not going to lose, it's all good. But it's, it's just, Heyman was fantastic. But then, of course, we got a bit of the dreaded 50 50 booking as uh, Kofi Kingston had to hit trouble in paradise so he can get his heat back. Fuck off. Anyway. Uh, we go to the commentators at ringside, they talk balls. One of the things, I mean, the only reason I even mentioned this yet is that they bring up the, the people's names Michael Cole, Jerry King Law, JBL. And their Twitter handles underneath, yeah. Do you know when I've noticed that the WWE Live logo is straight over JBL? So it's like we don't actually want you to follow JBL on Twitter, so I'm gonna put the WWE logo here. Just me. Anyway, we get a video package about Gold Dust, which is lovely. And then, and this is important this week, guys. This is important because I need some help. I understand you may have already commented, so if you want to refresh, it'll put you exactly where you just were if you're on Google Chrome, for example. I need another comment from you guys. This is even more important than do you watch me in HD because we get a little vid and it says the, the, the did you know thing and it says the WWE app has been downloaded 7 million times and I need to know from you guys is it going to be 7 million and 1 because I have in my hand folks my new phone happy days I got myself a Nokia Lumia 920 now this is the thing and this is important this is a Windows phone so will you tell me please instantly isn't that fucking huge? Is it just me or is that massive? Um, haven't even turned it on yet. Don't know if it does. I don't know what it does. Don't know anything. It's just I just wanted to. I just wanted to show you to say you know, does does win does the WWE app work on Windows Phone? Because I've got this horrible feeling, you know, that it doesn't. And what I'm going to do now? I won't be able to have the fucking app. Ooh. Anyway, backstage, Paul Heyman has slipped on some water. He's hurt his leg. He doesn't want to see the WWE doctor. He's got his own doctor. Happy days. And then Booker T, who's, I don't know, Booker T turned heel or something, because he tells Big Show to think about his family tonight and to not let pride control his head. And then we've got Bray Wyatt defeating Dolph Ziggler after a sister Abigail. Nine whole minutes, like I say, of wrestling in the first hour of this show. Heyman comes out. He doesn't believe in Canadian health. Claire, whatever that is. Anyone else spot that one? Uh, he has his doctor with him, and he thinks he's done his knee and can't compete on Sunday at New at Night of Champions. He goes, he's going back to New York to heal up and promises to be back soon. He goes to leave, but here comes Brad Maddox, who of course is a heel, who should be just like, yeah, yeah, you know, all right, no problems. But for some reason, he's got one of the WWE doctors with him. It's the doctor who um, saved Jerry the King Lawler, apparently, and uh, he does an examination on Paul Heyman, and uh, he thinks he's fine. Happy days. So then um, Heyman gets vexed about this, and then Punk comes out with a kendo stick, and <laughs> Heyman's leg miraculously heals. He's able to run away. And then, so, so um, the chat, the crowd chant, kill the doctor, Seth Punk. Punk's like, you know, threatening him in the corner. And they're just like, how many fucking with you? Off you go. And, you know, puts the rope down for him, and as the doctor goes to bend down to the ropes, he absolutely batters him with the kendo stick, including the last shot, which is straight to the head. Fantastic stuff. Absolutely brilliant. I enjoyed this segment a lot. A Divas match happened next, which even though I'm watching this on Daily Motion the next day, I left playing and went to the toilet, which is nice. Uh, Alberto Do Rio um, then defeated R-Truth in a match the crowd cared so much about that they chanted for JBL, Jerry the King Lawler, Michael Cole, Randy Savage, RVD and The Undertaker. Good work, Toronto. Good work. Um, yeah. Armbreaker gets the win. On Sunday, the pre-show will feature a four-way tag match, which is lovely. Winners get to face the Shield for the belts. Why not? Could have done that tonight, <laughs> so that we can go into tonight of champions knowing another match. But meh, fuck it, whatever. And then the return Santino Morella defeated Antonio Cesaro. I, oh man, I actually enjoyed this match a little bit. It was all right. I actually lulled, legitimately laughed out loud when um, when he did. 
when Antonio Cesaro did the did the uh, well, there's only one way to put it, isn't there? The 30 Revolutions Big Swing of Doom! Because ah! that was fantastic, and the crowd went absolutely nuts for it, didn't they? They also went nuts for the Cobra attempt, which is fantastic. Some sort of judo slam gets the win. That wouldn't have ever pinned anyone, but fuck it, why not? Um, and then, um, yeah, harmless fun, should we say with that one? And then Damien Sandow defeating The Miz. Right, it's a question about The Miz. I know I've gone on about The Miz quite a lot, right? On the back of Miz's pants. Now, if I've, if I've learned anything in wrestling, right, I have learned that if it says something on a guy's ass, it must be true. If you put undefeatable on your ass, that guy ain't losing. You know, if, this, if you put undefeated, this guy is never, not going to lose tonight. On Miz's pants, it says, B Miz. Now, I don't know what that means. If you want me to be a wrestler that only Spaz Phoenix likes, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to pass on that one. Truly, in this, this match, emphasised more than anyone I've seen recently, how little that... I'm getting sick of this. I need to move house. Do you know, I, right, right this minute, it is one minute past four, all right? Do I know what it is? I'm, yeah, of course you do. What is it? Go on. Where are you? Three main roads. It's a police car. It's a police car. There we go. Hang on. That's never two, is it? I need to move. I, I, it's one minute past four. I woke up this morning at eight o'clock. Right, so I've been up for eight hours, right? Eight hours I've been up, not one emergency vehicle today. Not one. Soon as I start a bit. Soon as I start a bit. Anyway, right, where was I? Yeah, I've seen a lot of matches recently, but this one, this one emphasised just how little the people give a shit about the mess. And his face forced Damien Sandow, loses to Damien Sandow. What happens? He loses because Bandango comes out and Damien Sandow takes the chance, rolls him up for the win. And what happens? Miz is sat there looking all better. So, oh, I lost. What are the crowd doing? Do -da. Do -da -do -do -do. To the point where JBL says they don't care, they're too busy Fandango. Fuck you, Miz. Fuck you. Nice and simple. <sighs> you have to be cross some special kind of guy to like him. Don't you, Spaz? Still subscribe to me, still watch my vids. In the back, Goldust says he's the black sheep of the family. He's got a second, he got chance after chance after chance, didn't deserve them, fucked them all up. But Cody is a good kid. He learned, did everything the right way, and he's the one who's getting punished. So tonight, he gets his second chance, but only, of course, if he wins. Triple H interrupts, tries to get in his head, says you know, he's under a lot of pressure tonight, and he hopes he doesn't let the family down. Oof. Great stuff. Incidentally, by the way, if you like gold dust, and who doesn't? Come on, guy's awesome. He he was um, over in Britain recently. He did he had a fantastic verbal sparring match with Dave Rain, um, which there's a link to below. He's also appeared in at least two episodes of the PC Fiction, which is the PCW version of science fiction, which is what a program the GPW guys make. And in at least two of those, they're both very entertaining as well. Um, happy days. They're all in the description. Please go and check them out because you'll love them. Uh, the verbal sparks, trust me on this one, right? If you've seen anything of Dave Rain, and you know how much I like Dave Rain at the best of times, if you've seen anything of Dave Rain, you'll know how good he is on the mic. His sparring with gold dust is magical. It's so good. So, Randy Orton then defeating Goldust in a really good match. Crowd was shit hot for everything. Announcers played up the Rhodes versus Gold versus McMahon, sorry, feud that's been going on for decades. I kind of wish, I wish they'd mentioned that Orton was one of the guys with Batista who threw Goldust into the electrical box. I know that was a decade ago, but just a bit of continuity there. Another reason you know, for a bit of revenge for Goldust. Just, you know, I know there's a lot on the line as it is, but just an added little thing might have, you know. If I was on commentary, I would have fucking noticed it, for fuck's sake. Anyway, um, my God, one hell of a great near fall off the cross crossroads. Magnificent. RKO obviously gets the win. And then Orton gets on the mic, says his dream of saving his brother's career has been shattered just like Brian's dream of becoming WWE Champion at the weekend. Uh, Sunday, on Sunday, sorry, at Night of Champions will be shattered. Good stuff. Enjoyed this one a lot, guys. Really good match. Lost Matadors are still coming, which is nice. In the back, 
Steph is a fucking bitch to gold dust. Wonderful stuff all over it. Tell your dad I said hi. God damn, you evil bitch. You're going to get your comeuppance soon, Steph, and it's going to be wonderful. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm enjoying this angle, because all of the guys, Orton and The Shield and Steph and Triple H, they're all going to get the comeuppance, and it's going to be great. Isn't it? Isn't it? That's why we're going to tolerate all this shit. That's why I, I, I'm sure there's people out there going, mm, I don't like this. This storyline's bullshit. I am enjoying it. Trust me, this storyline, you know, it's like Cody Rhodes. When Cody Rhodes comes back, the pop that motherfucker's going to get is going to be unreal. And he's going to come out and he's going to batter people and he's going to have a new main event superstar. Now, granted, I said that after Money in the Bank, didn't I? After Money in the Bank, when, when Cody turned face and it was just like, yeah, this guy's going to be the new guy. And then he comes out on Raw and SmackDown that week and it's just like, there's no reaction for him at all for in the slightest. They've got a chance to really create a new star from all this with that. Happy days. Happy days. RVG then defeated Ryback by disqualification when Ryback rammed him bollock first into the ring pose twice. No play job. Disappointing. Really is. Um, odd way to make, this is an odd way to make me think to myself, you know, Rob Van Damme's winning on Sunday. Don't get that one one bit. And then um, one guy, one guy chatting, Goldberg, on your own there, mate. Uh, shell shock for Rob Van Damme, because just to drill, drive the point home, you know, happy days. Uh, in the back, Stephanie Charles Big showed that if he interferes in the main event and touches the shield, he will be fired. This ironclad contract is a load of shite, isn't it? It really is. And then Covey, because he's so mad, Big Show smashes what is probably the only tube-style TV left in America. <laughs> smashy, smashy. And then, in the main event, uh, Daniel Bryan defeating Dean Ambrose in a good match that the crowd will all over once again. Featured really nice Chris wrestling from both men. While I will always, always moan about a DDT on the outside not being a fucking career killer of a move, I've got to say, I've got a soft spot for a belly back suplex off the top rope. Happy days. I love uh, Dean Ambrose shouting, stay down, stay down. Why won't he stay down? He falls for a roll up. Happy days. And if that's not enough, Daniel Bryan then does a suicide dive onto Randy Orton on the outside. We get the hope spot. Yes, we've needed this for three fucking weeks, four weeks maybe. We've needed that one little glimmer of hope though, so we can still believe in fucking Daniel Bryan. And we got that at this moment. Not just that though, because then the Shield attacked Daniel Bryan and Big Show comes over to help with his chair. He's talked out of it. But then Big, uh, then Hunter and Steph come out. You will hit the KO punch on uh, on Daniel Bryan again. So he gets in the ring. And Randy Orton in this bit was absolutely superb. Re the way he got in um, Big Show's face, I loved. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Thing is, their little bit of jaw jacking is just the right amount of time that Daniel Bryan needs when Randy Orton turns around and knees to the face, and that's what ends the show, and that I enjoyed. So, I've got on my notes here, right, I enjoyed this Heyman segment, I enjoyed Orton versus Goldust, I, I'm probably the only person in the world at the moment who's buzzing off Stephanie McMahon's character, and I enjoyed the main event. But, and here's the crux here, uh, I don't care about anything else on this show. I really, really did not give a flying fuck, right? And because of that, now think about this, this is the go-home show for SmackDown, for, uh, for, for Night of Champions. For SmackDown, I went to say SummerSlam because I'm a fucking idiot that you're subscribed to. Um, yeah, I don't care about Night of Champions. I really am not interested in this show. I want to see Punk and Axel and Heyman, right? And I want to see Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton, and I really am not fussed about the rest of the show. Interesting, that one, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, what do you think? What do you think? Now, I would like to try and cram in my WWE Unforgiven review before my predictions vid for Night of Champions. So what that means is I'll try and get my Unforgiven review up on Thursday, and then I'll do a, a Night of Champions predictions vid on Saturday. How does that sound? What did you think of Raw last night? Let me know down below. Do you watch me in HD? Let me know down below. Can I get the WWE app on Windows phone? Let me know down below. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I've been Mark P. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy, guys. And I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.